Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another video. This is part four of working through the evasive machine here on the Hack Smarter platform. Now this is part four. So if this is the first video that you are watching, I do recommend going back to part one and beginning at part one. Otherwise you might feel a little bit lost, but hey, either way, you're gonna learn a bunch. Additionally, I recommend that you hack right alongside of me. You will learn a lot by watching me. You'll learn even more by having hands on keyboard and hacking the machine with me. So you can get a subscription to Hack Smarter at a very affordable rate. Go to hacksmarter.org to learn more and then you can launch the VM, download the VPN, and hack alongside of me. But without any further ado, let's dive on into the hacking for today. Now, a real quick recap. If we jump over to our notes, remember that in part three, I spent most of it uh, troubleshooting. You know, I also forgot to mention, if you look above me, you will see chat. I make these videos while I live stream. We have over 70 people right now hanging out in the live studio audience, and I live stream all the time. So if you never join me for a live stream, you are missing out. Make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell notification here on YouTube so that you're notified the next time I am live. But anyways, in part three, as you may remember, I spent most of the time troubleshooting. I couldn't quite get the mail server to cooperate with me, and I accidentally locked out Roger's account when I tried to set up Evolution. So we're going to pick up right where we left off. We now know Roger's correct password of new user 2025. We verified that with NetExec showing that it works. Now we want to see, can we get it set up to the mail server so we can send an email to Alfonso? And ultimately we're going to send a phishing email. Now I showed you in part three, how to install evolution. So I'm not going to show that here, but it's super easy. It's just literally pseudo apt install evolution, but I still have it installed. So I'm going to open up evolution and we're gonna go ahead and try to configure an account for Roger. So we have our welcome page here. You probably remember this from part three. We don't need to restore anything from backup. Our full name is gonna be Roger and it's gonna be roger at winserver01.hs for the email. And I'm gonna go ahead and click next. For our receiving email, we're gonna do winserver01.hs for hack smarter. And I believe the port, and I'll just double check. Let me go over to my notes. We'll go to our in-map scan and our IMAP port, I believe is gonna be 143. Yep, I am right. So we'll change this to 143 and it is not encrypted on port 143. And our username is gonna be roger at winserver01.hs. I'm gonna hit next on that. Receiving option should be fine. We'll hit next on sending email. And now we wanna configure SMTP with winserver01.hs. That's the name of the mail server. And SMTP port, at least on this machine, is going to be port 25. Whoops and we'll change this to no encryption. Now, this is one thing I was missing in part three. Note that you need a checkbox, server requires authentication, and we wanna change our username here from Tyler or whatever your username is to the Roger user. So I'm gonna do Roger at winserver01.hs. Make sure I spell that correctly. All of that looks good to me. Plane should be fine. We'll see if it bugs out for us. I'll hit next on there just verifying that all the details look good to me, which they do, and I'm gonna hit next. And it says, congratulations, it is complete. We should be prompted for the password now, which we are, and that is new user 2025 exclamation mark. And now this is where I cross my fingers and hope it actually works this time and hit okay. And yes. We did not get an error message. Beautiful. Let's make sure we can actually send an email from within this mail server. So I'm gonna hit new in that top corner and let's try to send an email out to Alfonso at winserver 01 OS and we'll say hello. And I'll say, hi Alfonso. I hope you're doing well. Pretty soon I'll send a totally safe.exe file. Please open it. Okay, thanks. We'll say, okay, thanks like that. <laughs> That's exactly how you would type in a business setting. And I, 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 Gris, I see your question, my friend. When we are done recording this, I'll come back and do Q&A again, but we are done with the Q&A segment. But I'll do a little more Q&A in about 15 to 20 minutes when we are done recording this part for YouTube. Anyways, let's see if we can actually send an email. Okay, it's going to prompt me for my credentials again. We'll do new user 2025 exclamation mark, please work. 
and it worked. Beautiful. Now, if we go back to our lab page, we have a pretty good hint of a few things we need to keep in mind. So if we look at our objective and scope, I want you to notice this. We, well, we already broke this, right? This is why we got locked out of Roger's account yesterday is because of the anti-brute force mechanism. It says, do not get locked out as this will trip up an alert and the operation is over. Well, we did that. We screwed up the first time. That's the nice thing about being a lab and we re reset the machine. The other thing to keep in mind is Defender is on and up to date, which means we cannot just shoot over a .exe generated with MSF Venom because that is going to be signatured by Defender. There is no way Alfonso is going to be able to open that. The other hint that we have is if we jump over to our notes. And when we were looking at the PDF file, it says, hello, Roger, can you send me the EXE program via email once you are done with it? So we know that Alpha, well, actually, let me type this down. We'll make a note here. We connected to uh, the mail server with evolution using Roger's creds. And I'm doing H, we'll do an H3 maybe. No, H2. Sending the phishing email. All right, so what do we all know? Well, we know this. Windows Defender is on and it's updated and enabled. So we want to keep that in mind. We also know Alfonso is expecting a .exe from Roger. So what is our mission? Our mission is to create a .exe that bypasses Defender, but gives us a reverse shell for post exploitation. So now we have to do a little bit of AV evasion. Well, here's what I know. Some cool guy named Tyler Ramsby released a course called Sliver C2 Pen Testing and Evasion. And in that course, that cool dude teaches you how to create a stager for Sliver that fully evades the most up to date Windows Defender. And we can bypass Defender and get a not just a reverse shell, but a sliver session on the victim if they run the .exe. And I think it should work based on everything that I see. But here's the other thing. I don't even remember the exact syntax for doing that, but that's the beautiful thing about my courses. So this is very much a promotion, but not on purpose. I'm gonna give you a sneak preview of that silver course because I'm gonna quite literally use it in order to uh, remember the syntax for generating this stager. So give me just a moment as I get this course pulled up and then I'll go back to sharing my screen. Sliver, introduction to Sliver C2, preview. All right, so here is the Sliver course. You can get it right now at hacksmurder.org. I think it's like 45% off. It is a full course, has 20 labs built into it. You can see everything I teach here, but spoiler alert, at the very end of the course, I have a section on detection and evasion. And I explain like AVEDR landscape, Windows Defender overview, we have some fun stuff there. But I teach you right on bypass Windows Defender. If you click into the demo here, I should have all the code on how we end up doing this. So if you've never taken one of my courses, I give you challenge labs. And after every challenge lab, I then teach and explain how to do it. So you're not stuck trying to like figure it out in case you get stuck where you're trying to do the challenge lab. So you can see in addition to the video, every part of my course has a detailed video as well as a text component that is based on the video, literally based on the subtitles in the video. So we should be able to follow these steps and create a .exe that will bypass Defender. You will also notice that we need a Windows machine to do this. Now, a few people posted on the Hexmurder Discord that they figured out how to do all of this from within Linux, which is amazing, but I haven't tested it yet. Please wear glasses to protect your eyes. What? No, <laughs> I don't wear glasses. Anyways, what I have done is in this lab, there's actually a Windows dev machine built into it. So if you don't have your own Windows dev machine, which I do, but I use it for work, and so I'm not gonna share it with all of you, 
I gave you one for free. It's right here. Well, it's not for free. You need to be access to the lab. But in addition to the lab, there is a Windows dev machine and there's RDP access that we can set up. So I'm going to go ahead and launch this Windows dev machine. There's nothing super special about the machine except for it has like Visual Studio code installed for you or not Visual Studio code, Visual Studio. So you don't have to set up your own Windows dev machine. Oh, Boonie Bam said a basic non-stage Meterpreter EXE worked just fine for me. Oh, that's awesome. I don't, it's surprising that that bypasses Defender. I'll have to try that out in my own little lab environment to see if it works on like the most recent uh, Defender. We'll give this just a moment to boot up. It is a Windows machine, so it can take a little bit. If you don't want to use RDP, you can also do Connect, and it will use a Guacamole and open it up in a browser window. So either one works just fine, but we'll go ahead and use the Windows dev machine. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to open the new tab and I'm just going to change this to RDP and I'm going to open up Remina. That's what I like to use for RDP. And we'll see if we can connect to our windows dev machine. We'll say yes on accepting the certificate. And we have the password right here with the username of administrator. So we'll do administrator and type in the password and hit okay. Now, since we just booted it up, it might take a minute or so for RDP to fully connect. Looking over at chat, make sure I'm not missing anything. Philly said, busy with the sliver course, not the evasion chapter yet, so learning before learning. There you go. This will be a preview of what you are going to do in the course. The other cool thing about the course is there's a capstone challenge at the end that takes everything you learned in the course and ties it all together with a lab. I do plan on releasing that lab itself as a standalone lab on the platform. Um, I think that's scheduled for February or March when that one will come out. But if you don't have access to the sliver course, you'll still get to do the capstone challenge if you want. I'll release it for everyone. Because you don't have to use sliver. I mean, you could solve the capstone in multiple different ways. All right, we have, uh, we're RDP'd into the machine. And now if you've never used Remina, I'll give you some pro tips for it. You can see this small little box as if we're working from like a calculator, that probably wouldn't be very fun. So what you can do is up here, we can do toggle dynamic resolution update. So I'm gonna do that. And now if we did not know how to do this, but you have access to the sliver course, you should be able to follow it step by step. So open Visual Studio Code, and we're gonna create a file named stager.nim. So let's follow my steps and see See if my steps are actually correct. <laughs> so Visual Studio Code should be on this machine, I think, I hope. Come on, Windows. Uh, Visual Studio, rather, it shouldn't be, did I say Visual Studio Code on the sheet? Oh, shoot. No, no, I do need to use Visual Studio. Uh, Visual Studio Code, I am right, not Visual Studio. I want to use Visual Studio Code for the NIM. I'm thinking about, I'm confusing myself with compiling C into uh, .exes. Oh, Jaynet said mine open via browser and it looks good and fast. Yeah, browser should work pretty well. It uses guacamole, it should be quick. I provide quite a bit of resources to these Windows VMs because when I'm on other platforms and I have to use a Windows VM, they always feel so incredibly slow and laggy. So I've given decent resources to these, but it's going slow anyways, because it's freaking Windows. Anyways, we also need to grab our, our code for the stager. So I'm going to go to this demo right here. I think this is where the code is. And yes, I give you the full code here. You, of course, need to update that. And we need to generate some of the shell code as well. And if you want to understand what's going on in the course, I have an entire video where I walk you through the NIM code that we're using in order to do this. But let's check on this. Do we have this open? We do. So I'm going to do new file here in Visual Studio Code, and I will just call it stager.nim. And desktop is fine. So I'm going to create file. And we have our stager.nim here. Let's go ahead and head over to my Sliver C2 course and see if I did everything correct. I'm gonna copy the code from the course that we worked on. And if you feel a little bit lost, I'll just direct you once again, check out the course. 
I explain all of this much slower. I'm going to close that out. I need to grab my VPN IP. I have way too many IPs here because I use Tailscale as well. But what you're looking for is your ton zero IP. So you can see my ton zero IP right there. I'm going to copy that. I'm also going to zoom in on this so you guys can see Visual Studio a little bit better. And let's update this to the proper IP. And it's going to try to call down that shell C dot bin. Technically, if we were doing a legit engagement, we'd probably want to rename that because shell C dot bin does sound like shell code, but I don't think it matters with Windows Defender. We'll, we'll have to find out. So we'll leave it as shell C dot bin, and I'm going to go ahead and save this file. Now let's jump back over to my course because we'll see how accurate my course is. Let me go to bypass Windows Defender. So Tyler from the past says, open Visual Studio code and create a new file named stager.nem, paste the stager code into the file, which we did, and then open up PowerShell and use the nim compiler to turn your source code into a .exe file. The dereleased flag is important for optimization, and the other flags ensure it's compiled for Windows AMD 64 architecture. And you can see the PowerShell code right there. So let's go ahead and follow my own steps and I'm like QAing my course again to see if it all works. I'm going to go ahead and run it as an administrator. I don't know if that's required, but we have admin rights to this, so we might as well. If it would open up, I'm going to go ahead and make the text bigger for you guys, just so you don't have to squint your eyes at it. So we'll go to font and I'll just change it to like 24 and I'm a CD to the desktop. So I think that's where I saved the stager.nim code is. You can see it right there, stager.nim. And if we jump over to this, we should be able to copy that. Hit enter, cross our fingers, and it should spit out a stager.exe. Hey, Matthias, the back end is all AWS type stuff slash core stack. We don't have any errors, so that's good. You can see that we have a success. And if we do dir, we have a stager.exe, which should bypass Windows Defender. But if we look at our code, if we look at Visual Studio code, you're gonna notice that our stager.exe is very much a stager, it's not stage list. What a stager does is it has to call out to our C2 server. For us, this is just gonna be our Kali Linux VM. We're gonna shoot up Sliver in just a moment, but it has to reach out to this uh, and download the shell code to then execute it in memory. So if we just run the state, if I just send the stager.exe to Alfonso, well, it's actually not going to do anything because he'll run it. It will try to reach out to us, but if we haven't prepared the shell code, everything is going to fail and it's not going to work. But I'm looking over at the time and we are at the 18 minute mark in the recording. And I actually think this is a very good natural stopping point. So if you're following along with this series on YouTube, I wanna give you a challenge. I have showed you in part four how to create a stager that will bypass Windows Defender, but you still need to generate shell code. You still need to spin up a listener with Sliver, and you need to catch that shell when you send it over to Alfonso. So I know it's going to be a little bit difficult, but you learn a lot by struggling. You learn a lot by kind of bumping your head against things and trying to figure it out on your own. So I want to give you that challenge. See if you can figure out how to create the shell code and see if you can figure out how to send this over to Alfonso and see if you can get a full shell on Alfonso's machine. If you can, amazing. If you cannot, that's okay as well. Just join me in the next video and we'll keep on working through this together. Say so, hey, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.